The Wyre Forest is one of the largest areas of ancient semi-natural oak woodland in Britain. Its 6,500 acres, vast though they are, are all that remains of a wood that once stretched along the Severn Valley from Worcester to Bridge North. The forest and its surrounding area have shaped the lives of its residents, and the following interviews offer us a brief snapshot into the lives of the people of the Wyre. They lived in tents, uh, canvas or skin tents, that were known locally as booths. And the plural of booths in the old talk was boothen. And the local name of booten comes from that. And you get booten oak, booten bridge. One old lady told me that they used to go out and pick blackberries and sell them to a fruit merchant. And with the money they got for the blackberries, they bought sugar to make jam. They hadn't got the money to make the jam until they'd sold the first lot of blackberries. The Germans dropped the bomb. We got a new station in the border forest. And I think they dropped three more. Boy Clibri, and uh, it killed two lads there. He uh, uh, went playing around with the bomb, where he dropped the bomb. And the detonator went off and the him and, and blowed him straight up in the air. And then buried in to be my sir. I was asked if I would pick cones. It was Cosh Compound joining the Douglas fir in the bottom here. They were about 80 to 100 foot tall. And I went down to the forest of Dean and was trained with a tree bicycle. It was a piece of stainless steel on both feet. You climb up the tree until you got to live boughs that would hold your weight. And then you got out of the tree bicycle, put your carabiners on every meter, went on up to the top and started picking cones. Some of the fishermen have been fishing down the bottom of Settley Wood at Folly Point in the past, uh, past 30, 40 years ago, and they've actually seen fallow books swimming across the, the River Severn by Trimpley Reservoir. And even, even before Trimpley Reservoir was there, I've heard stories of fallow books swimming across there. There's, a, there's an old sort of ford there, and it seems to be a favourite place for the deer to cross. I was on the way back home about 10 o'clock in the morning. I was climbing this steep bank um, above Badeney Brook, called Breakneck Bank. It's very, very aptly named because it's almost vertical in places. And in the bracken in front of me, I could see the bracken waving about and I could see this fellow doe moving about in a strange manner, really. She actually, I watched her give birth to this little fawn. Mother started to bring me here when I was about six months old. And we used to come from Oxford to um, Arley um, using the Southern Valley Railway. My grandfather would come often with a pony and trap and he would be waiting down by the little wicket gate down at uh, Arley Station. Dan Smith, he who lived early 1900s, he would walk to Highley to be at the pit for six o'clock, and if you were there at half a minute past six, you were sent home again. Mm. So they'd come home at night and they'd look after the cat, the cow, and the mm. pig, and the plants and potatoes, and mm. so there'd be a long hourly life, wouldn't it? What is regarded as, as the good life yeah. Yeah, it was, was a hard life. If his mum, if she was pushed for time, which nearly always was, then the only thing you could drink before going to school was cider. 
Thank <laughs> you.